Think of migrants from Guatemala and most people envision impoverished workers heading north to improve their lives. An estimated 1.3 million Guatemalans are currently living in the United States. That's roughly 10% of its citizens. In 2012, they sent home a record $4.8 billion, 9% of Guatemala's gross domestic product. But there's a high cost for those who migrate to the U.S. Al Jazeera's David Mercer has the story of the dark side of migration, reporting from Guatemala's Western Highlands. In dusty towns and villages across Guatemala, there's a quiet exodus underway. Every day, hundreds of people begin the perilous trip to the United States, driven north by hopes of a better future. But for many, the American dream is a nightmare. It's a terrible situation. It makes my wife cry. For years, Augustine Cobo wanted to go to the United States to work. Tired of his children going to bed hungry, the father of five agreed to pay smugglers $7,500 for a so-called special trip to the United States. But Augustine was caught by U.S. immigration at the border and sent back to Guatemala in leg shackles. I went to the United States to make life better for my children. They can't go to school now because I can't pay for class materials. Now he has to figure out how to pay the crippling debt. Here, if we can find work, we only make $5 a day. I don't know how many years it will take to pay back the money I owe. It might never be possible to pay it back. But successfully crossing the border and finding a job doesn't guarantee a better life for those who were left behind. Feliciano's husband went to the U.S. nine years ago. She didn't want him to leave, but he promised the money he earned would help them build their house and pay for their children's education. However, once he was settled into his new life, he abandoned them. After he paid the thousands of dollars he owed to the coyotes who took him there, he stopped sending money entirely. He said he was forced to work when he was young and that our children should do the same. He left when our son was just eight days old. And it's Feliciana's children who were paying the highest price. Now nearly 10, her son Pedro has never met his father. I miss him so much, even though I don't know him. If he can't send money to us, I just want him to come home to be with us. It's estimated that one out of every 10 Guatemalans has gone to the United States looking for work. In 2012, these migrants sent home nearly $5 billion. It's a lifeline in a country where more than half of the population lives in poverty and a reminder of why so many take the risk. Seeing houses like this one behind me is one of the things that really drives people here to make the dangerous trip north. The idea of making lots of money, coming back, building a house, building a business, and changing the lives of their family. But this too creates problems. With fistfuls of US dollars, migrants are driving up the price of land. Over the past two decades, parcels like this have shot up by 10,000%. Katarina had to borrow $15,000 just to buy a tenth of an acre of land. Now she's hoping a son working illegally in the US can pay off her bank loan. The price of land has gone up so much. And when the seller hears that you have family in the United States, the price goes up even higher. But what can we do? Historians link the beginning of migration from Guatemala to a CIA-orchestrated coup d'etat in 1954. That single event laid the groundwork for a 36-year civil war, Latin America's bloodiest. In the battle against communism, the United States supported a succession of Guatemalan dictators, some of whom are accused of wiping villages off the map. Many areas have yet to recover. All of the people here were devastated by the war. We lost land, houses, and family members, and we still face many problems. Francisco Velasco works with migrants and their families in the Ishil region, and he's seen firsthand the dark side of migration. He says stopping people from leaving will require Guatemala to make good on its promises to create jobs and promote social development in rural areas. But Velasco thinks the U.S. 
has an important role to play as well. The Commission for the Historical Clarification makes clear the role the United States played in the Guatemalan Civil War, and this is why the U.S. should help our community recover by providing temporary work visas. This would mean people wouldn't have to travel to the U.S. illegally with all the devastating impacts on our communities. In the meantime, Velasco's group continues its grassroots work, one of their latest projects going after deadbeat dads. Katarina is one of their first success stories. With Velasco's help, she got an arrest warrant for her estranged husband for not paying child support. Rather than risk being arrested when he returns to Guatemala from California, he agreed to start paying. Initially, he didn't want to send my son anything. But thankfully, he changed his mind. And on January 8th, last year, he started sending $25 a month. While it might not seem like much, for Katarina and her son, it was good news. And as the land of opportunity continues to draw thousands of Guatemalans north, good news is sometimes hard to come by. David Mercer, Al Jazeera, in the Ishil region, Guatemala. And that is it for us here on America Tonight. Remember, if you'd like to comment on any of the stories you've seen here tonight, just log on to our website, aljazeera.com slash America Tonight, and join the conversation on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Good night.